Good morning, everybody. Sports Live in the ATL. David here. What a weekend. What a busy but very entertaining weekend for myself. I cannot complain about that. Fortunate, blessed. Uh, college football started uh, for a lot of the big schools. Uh, Georgia Tech won. Georgia plays, uh, I think, in a week or two. Um, the Braves won three of four against the Nationals, in, including uh, beating uh, Max Scherzer yesterday. I will be doing a uh, Tomahawk takeover on Thursday. I might do one Wednesday. I'm not sure. My schedule kind of changed for this coming Wednesday uh, for work purposes, and the work is the main thing for me. Uh, so I try to adjust the YouTube videos to my work schedule, but I'm off Thursday. Plan on doing some things Thursday. Uh, the Monday after, um, the Falcons lost to the Seattle Seahawks. I still scratch my head. I've been watching some videos. Uh, Game Changer Sports, a.k.a. The Neighbors. Go check him out. Uh, go check out Sergeant AR-10. Uh, CC Ryder tagged that as. They did some uh, post-game Seattle Seahawks. I, Vito Mayer did some. I haven't really watched any post-game, and I was serious when, when I said that uh, I'm not going to watch any press conferences. I don't. Because the Falcons, Matt Ryan, and Dan Quinn, they all say the same thing whenever they lose. We need to regroup. Um, we got to have a better week of practice. We got to get back to our X's and O's. Stop. Um, every team was had a, didn't have a preseason. Every team went through the same thing. Now, I understand that you're going to start off slow in stretches. Uh, I said the offense uh, for all the teams would play better than the defenses. Uh, and that kind of was the case because uh, the secondary for Atlanta looked horrible. Uh, but the pass rush looked really good. Uh, Grady Jarrett, one and a half sacks. Dante Fowler, a half a sack. Uh, Tack McKinley got a sack. Uh, we, we did pretty good. I think the run gassed us a little bit, but overall, the pass rush, which was a huge issue for us, looked really good. Now it's one game. The, it, it could be the pass rush is not going to be as good based on one game throughout the whole season, but then again, it could be the secondary may not be that bad the whole season. I don't know. It's one game. I'm going by what I saw, and what I saw yesterday was an unprepared secondary, um, unprepared offensive play calls. Now, Matt Ryan is getting a lot of a lot of grief from Falcon fans, saying he's old, it's time to get rid of him. Sure, he underthrew some 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 uh, some receivers, but he also made plays too. Granted, in the fourth quarter we were playing catch up, so we were throwing the ball more, but you still got to make the plays. He threw a nice touchdown to Calvin Ridley really in the corner of the end zone. He still made plays. Now, would I rather, would I, I should say, would I like to see Matt Ryan do more uh, changing the calls? Yes. He's clearly capable of changing some of these calls. Some, cause look at the fourth down calls that Matt Ryan made as opposed to the third and longs and fourth down play calls Russell Wilson made. I mean, Russell Wilson, a couple fourth down uh, plays resulted in touchdowns. One for sure. I don't really remember... Uh, other ones, but I know a third down and 26 or whatever it was, he threw deep to try to make a play, which I thought being at midfield, he was going to be safe and maybe go for the field goal or punt. I, I was surprised, but that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do as a champion, as, as, as a quarterback leading the team that wants to win a Super Bowl. You make plays. You throw it deep. You might get the benefit of a pass interference. I thought it was kind of 50 50 ish but he got it, and then he wound up scoring a touchdown. And then on fourth and five, he threw a bomb uh, on a rollout or whatever it was to somebody. I think it was Metcalf or I don't remember. Touchdown. Matt Ryan throws a fourth and three lollipop little screen that gets knocked away. He gets sacked on one play. I mean, come on, man. It took him forever to get Julio involved deep. You know, I understand we got a lot of weapons on our team. Hayden Hurst made one heck of a catch. Oh, my God. I don't even think Austin Hooper did that. I, I didn't know he was that athletic. He made a nice catch on a drive. Too bad that was wasted and we didn't win. Um, we had three receivers over 100 yards. Gage, Ridley, Julio. My God, you got to win those games when you're putting up numbers like that. Uh, Todd Gurley, 45 or 50 yards carries and his first uh, touchdown for a Falcon. Now, I know you want to rest him up to avoid, you know, pulling a hamstring or whatever, but why wasn't he used more? When we were down, you know, deep in Seattle territory, why was he not used more? On fourth and five, or fourth and three, or three and one, third and one, why was he not used? You know, Falcons, you don't have time to be tinkering around with possibilities. Dan Quinn, you're already on the hot seat, man. That oven is turning up on you. I don't blame you 
totally for the loss, but you are the leader of this uh, of, the, uh, of this coaching staff. You are the main man on this team. You control everything on this team. And it frustrates me because we have so much talent on this team. Again, one game does not make or break a year, but I did say it's indic- it could be indicative. And what I saw, the secondary looked horrible. Un- totally unprepared. Uh, some Falcon fans are, are coming on here saying, well, it is one game. But Seattle went through the same thing, and they had to fly three out, four hours away or whatever it was from the West Coast. They played like the more well-rested team. Yes, they didn't have much of a pass rush. Um, Matt Ryan was gashing them. Todd Gurley was gashing them. Russell Gage, Julio Ridley gashing them. Hurst, I don't, I just don't know how we, how we fell behind 38 to 18 with all that production. Um, over 500 yards. You know, again, some of it in the fourth quarter because we were one-dimensional because we were behind so much. But you still got to make the plays. And even when the game was close, 14 to 12 at halftime, we were making plays. But something happened in the third quarter to where we just utterly fell apart. Couldn't stop anybody. Uh, and that's sad coming out, you know, uh, of halftime when you got a 15-minute break. You got to, you know, you're in a close ball game, your home opener, etc. I, I don't get it. I really do not get it. Um, so I'm going to pay up these bets this week on Thursday. I'm going to go to the post office and mail off my Julio. I'm going to do a, a video this uh, the next day or so and sign it for uh, uh, for Noah. He sent me a text on what he want else signed on it. And I'm going to send out the mini helmet that I got here and the football for Norbcam. Um, so that's probably all my interactions uh, this week now. I think the Seattle Seahawks is done. I wish them. I wish you guys nothing but the best the rest of the year, and I hope that we get that we. This is not indicative of our season, and we're able to make the playoffs, which I believe we're clearly capable of doing and contending for a Super Bowl. But not like that. I got people on my page saying Falcons aren't going to win a Super Bowl. Yeah, blah blah. But I mean, if they play like that, from the secondary perspective and the play calls, you're not going to win because you got to make calls. You got to be aggressive, and I will hold. Matt Ryan's slightly accountable in this one, despite the fact he had 450 yards and, you know, he does, he is an older quarterback, but nobody's, you know, the funny thing is Falcon fans want to come on here knocking Matt Ryan, saying he's old and washed up. So you're trying to say we can't win a Super Bowl with that, yet people are picking the Bucks to win it with an old Tom Brady. People are putting the Saints to win the division and contend for a Super Bowl with an old Drew Brees. Spare me with that right there. You're just frustrated. You're just frustrated about coming out with another loss to open the season. Two straight years. I get that. But Matt Ryan is is a borderline Hall of, Hall of Fame quarterback, elite quarterback. He's made a lot of great plays in his career. So just because, you know, he's underthrowing receivers, even though he's making plays to receivers and everything, uh, for Falcon fans, which is their opinion, to knock Matt Ryan is not fair because... First of all, who do you got better, number one? Number two, Drew Brees and Tom Brady are old. But yet, y'all think they're going to contend for a Super Bowl. And we have more offensive talent than um, than New Orleans Saints overall on the offensive side. Our defense is, our pass rush, to me, is better than New Orleans. Uh, our, our We have more offensive talent than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I know they got, you know, you know Gronkowski and, you know, and uh, Fournette and Brady. But what happened yesterday? They lost. But yet, y'all aren't going to jump off the bandwagon, you know, in the media about Tampa Bay. Stop. You, a lot of you guys just love to hate on Matt Ryan. And I think because you're still thinking about Michael Vick. I heard Justin Fields' name being mentioned. But I feel a lot of y'all are still on the Michael Vick and don't like the fact that Ryan took over for Vick. Well, my opinion is Michael Vick had an opportunity and he blew it too. Okay, so spare me with that. Matt Ryan, he's a good quarterback. I do wish he would change the plays more. Uh, because Russell Wilson clearly controls that Seattle offense. He made some really, really good throws on fourth down, while Matt Ryan made some really, really bad throws. But he's still my quarterback. There's a reason why I repped this jersey right here. There's a reason why this jersey will never be up for a bet. Now, this was placed on a bet. People ask me, why did I put up the Julio Jones jersey? Because it was only a $40 jersey. This was a couple hundred dollar jersey. This was like a $40 or $50 jersey. I can get another one. I really thought we were going to win. I really wanted a Seattle a Seahawks trophy jersey. I really believed we were going to win this game. That's why I put this up. Okay, so and some, sometimes to get some, you need to put up something. And I put up what I felt I needed to to get that done. 
and they let me down. So uh, I got to depart with it on Thursday. So a couple more days of this up back here and then gone. But I already got a replacement shirt, Falcon shirt, that's going to go there and replace of that. And, and I, I expect to get another Julio jersey soon. But we clearly have some issues. Um, I'm hoping it's just one game. Uh, we got the Dallas Cowboys uh, coming up on Sunday um, in Dallas. The last time Atlanta was there, we won. We had Julio, Matt Ryan. Uh, I know the Cowboys got Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott, which was on my fantasy team, by the way, and I still lost my fantasy. God, it was a horrible Sunday. Um, and they got some weapons over there. Uh, I won't talk about that much right now. I'll do some preview videos this week. I'll do a, a little show on Thursday. Maybe I might do a, a, a Cowboys-Falcons uh, preview show late Tuesday night. I am not sure yet. Monday, maybe tonight or Tuesday night. I'm not sure because I just want to move on because that's, that's what you do in this league. Um, and I got some uh, video makers in the Dallas Cowboy fan base uh, that I'll interact with. But um, I'm disappointed by this loss. I'm disappointed with, with some of the effort. But there's also some positive things. The pass rush looked really good. Uh, so, oh, yeah, go, go check out Mad Mike Sports. I haven't looked at a lot of videos today or since the, the loss. I know a lot of things are popping up because I'm busy, but I will try to peek at them in the next couple days. Uh, but uh, Dan Quinn, uh, I'm, I'm being quite real. If he loses to Dallas and goes 0-2, I think uh, Arthur Blank might make a change because we have too much talent to be tinkering around. You don't want to go a month uh, and go 1-3, and 1-4. and four. If you know that uh, his time is coming to an end, he's been there since 2015, let a Super Bowl get away through no 100% fault. You know, not just him was the reason. Um, first couple of years came here, started off 5-0 in 2015, 2000 in collapse, 2016 Super Bowl choke, 2017 playoff loss at the 1, and then 18-19, and 7-9 and nine seasons and missing the playoffs. And then you start 0-1. No, you can't have that. You know, the Falcons, the, 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 one thing I can't stand is the Falcons are making coaching changes every five years, four or five years, it seems. Started with Jim Moore here a couple years. He got let go. Then uh, I'm not even going to count Quatrino. And then uh, Mike Smith came in, had, had some good years, uh, had a couple teams that were capable of winning a Super Bowl. So did so did Jim Mora, and he got let go. And then uh, uh, Dan Quinn came in, you know, set us up, let us down, and now he, he can't reach the 500 mark, and now he's on the hot seat. So I, I, as a Falcon fan here, I would rather make a change early to where we can get someone in here and keep the season rolling as opposed to waiting until 1-3, and 1-4, 1-5, and 1-6 and and to where the season's over. Our schedule's tough, but we got a lot of good players on this team, and the Falcons need to decide what they want to do because I'm tired of losing. I'm tired of coming up short at the end of the, at the, end of the year. I want, I want to see Atlanta win a Super Bowl. I deserve it. Loyal Falcon fans deserve it. This city, I said it before, is hurting. That's, what, that's why 2016 was so brutal. We actually had it, and it slipped away. And that's, I'm not going to go there again. But um, I believe if Dan Quinn loses to Dallas, the Falcons lose to Dallas, I believe he's going to take, take, take the brunt of it. And I think you need to make a change. No more waiting around. That's just how I see it. And, and uh, it's a must win in Dallas. And we'll, I mean, for, for an early game, Dallas is 0-1. So they're going to be hungry to get a win. I think they might even have fans in there. So uh, anyways... That's all I'm gonna say about that. I'm gonna save that for you know for my next video. This is the last time I'll talk about the Seattle game. Moving forward, it's on to Dallas. And uh, yeah, guys, do you want it or not? Do you want it or not? Sports live in the ATL, David, uh, and I'm out, y'all.